Welcome back to the Sampan Viking on China channel. And today um, I'm going to talk on a subject entitled Putin and Xi, the men that stopped the United States. And that is probably maybe a little bit premature to say that, um, but I think as a uh, eventual result, not unjustified. And I'm going to start off just by saying is that there's a, a big difference between a politician and a statesman. Um, and whilst there are probably many differences, the one in particular that I'm looking at is that a politician, as he, a national leader who is a politician, um, who is approaching the end of his term in office, will turn his attention to the thoughts of trying to find and establish a legacy of some sort. Um, and this is very different from a statesman who doesn't need to go and find a legacy because by the very dint of who they are and what they do, they will achieve one as a natural consequence of their actions and activities whilst in office. And so what I'm saying about Xi and Putin is that this undoubtedly will be part of their legacy and it's not something that they need to go out and seek. It'll be something that they achieve simply by following the policies and the agenda that they have set for themselves and their countries. There uh, is an awful lot being said at the moment about the uh, a lot of attention on the on Eastern Europe um, and the uh, situation with the Ukraine, and it is a familiar refrain that's coming out of the Western media that Russia is threatening to invade Ukraine. Well. Actually, they're not. Um, there is uh, one of the weirdest um, descriptions of fact I think that has uh, ever been um, that has ever, ever ever been stated for a long time. Um, the meeting today between Lavrov and Blinken was not to do with a, a, a Russian um, demand on the territory of Ukraine. It is to discuss the documents that Russia gave to the Americans in order to recalibrate, re rebalance, reset the security architecture um, in Europe and to stop um, year, um, ever eastward expansion of NATO. Nowhere in those documents is there a territorial demand by the Russian Federation on the territory in part or in whole of the nation of Ukraine. And so to continue to say that the talks were about averting a Russian invasion of Ukraine, I think is quite frankly disingenuous nonsense, as indeed is the claim that there are between 100 and 170,000 Russian troops on the border with Ukraine. Um, there is not. Um, and this is quite obvious by any by any <laughs> Eve's simple search um, of, uh, of where these troops are and how many there are. I mean, I have to say first, can't they be sure what the number is? I mean, 70,000 is quite a disparity between 100 and 170. Well, 70,000 troops is virtually the size of the entire British army. Are we really being told that, um, that NATO surveillance and intelligence cannot successfully identify a modern army in the field, the size of the British army? I find that rather difficult to believe. At the same point also, by saying that they are deployed on the Ukrainian border, that creates a distinct impression, uh, implication that these are troops deployed in the field, dug in in their launch positions, ready for an invasion. And they have been since about October, November, according to the media. Well, this is clearly absolute nonsense. Nobody is going to leave a modern army in the field, certainly not through the heart of a Russian winter. These troops, when what we are shown even by the Western media when they actually provide evidence, are in bases. And when you look at the map, you see these bases are typically 100 to 200 miles away from the Ukrainian border. Yes, they are in in Russia. Um, yes, they are in European Russia. So unless the America is demanding that the Russians don't have the right to deploy their own forces um, west of the Urals, I really don't see what the point here is. Um, it might, likewise, um, I'm, a, I'm in the United Kingdom. This would be like the European Union uh, accusing Britain of deploying tr its army down on the south coast ready to invade Europe, when in fact those troops were in bases in mid Wales or Yorkshire, a very, very long way away from the south coast. It's a rather ridiculous accusation. And so the whole premise that we're getting from the West is particularly 
ridiculous. But back to topic, back to the men that stopped NATO. And I'm going to be talking at this at a more optimistic way than perhaps a lot of people have been looking at this, insofar that war is not inevitable. Um, and quite frankly, we even know with regards to Ukraine, there's only two things that could trigger, well, three things that could trigger a war with the Ukraine. One is that Ukraine joins NATO and that um, what they call uh, NATO military infrastructure, by which they mean nuclear missiles, are deployed um, very close to the Ukrainian-Russian border. Or B, that um, the Ukrainian army attack the breakaway republics of the Donbass, or indeed that they attack Russia themselves. I add that in, that is obviously an option. It is not exactly uh, a realistic one, as, uh, as is pretty obvious. So that it would be a reactive thing. That is not the same as being ready to poise to launch an invasion. Um, and likewise, in other areas as, as well, probably Georgia. Um, if Georgia was to be brought into NATO and uh, missiles deployed there, it would have the same effect um, that Russia would intervene there. They're not going to have total surrounding of their borders. And with China, I think it's again rather similar. Um, it, it is in the same way as they're saying to, uh, if Russia is saying that Ukraine can't join NATO, um, they're saying to the Americans, well, Taiwan can't be treated as an independent state. There are two very, very similar um, arguments being put out, although couched differently to reflect the different realities of um, both theatres. Uh, but the end is the result. Now, everybody is, and I myself have, have talked about um, the prospect of um, military action in both the Ukraine and in both Taiwan, but at the same time I'm also very aware that actually China and Russia would only need to do that in a reactive way because they don't really need to do it at all. Um, as long as Taiwan does not declare independence, as long as the Ukraine does not join NATO, there is no need for Russia or China to necessarily be overly concerned with changing the status quo at this time. I wonder if this is the same for the Americans. Um, because this comes back to, well, A, you only have to look at the press releases of the last 24 hours to see the total disarray in the ranks of the US and its allies. I've spoken about this um, in, in the past, about the unity of purpose uh, between, with Russia and China against the disparate, um, the disparate aims of, of the West. This became starkly apparent over the last 24 hours. Um, with Biden's um, utterly bizarre press, press conference yesterday, um, Mr. Macron also making um, very off-message remarks um, and very clear cracks along multiple fronts um, in Europe again, certainly from people like the Germans who uh, do not um, see why they should have to freeze just to uh, further a geopolitical ambition of Washington's um, with regard to Nord Stream, etc., etc. So, it is the impetus, um, really, it comes down to a, a problem that, n that certainly regarding NATO has been stated by many people many, many times, uh, is that it is an organisation that is really um, looking for a purpose. And I've also heard people say, and, and I take that point, the point, this point particularly seriously, is that it's a bit like a, a, a multi-level marketing scheme in many, in many respects. It has to continue to grow. It has to continue to acquire new members because the moment it stops, the game is busted and it will just roll back. It'll just un unravel, especially when it has no other purpose than to exist and to grow for no other purpose. Um, and this, I think, is what Xi and Putin understand perfectly well that all they have to do is stop the momentum and it will automatically start to roll back and unravel under its own weight because it actually has very, very little substance. The Cold War in Europe ended 30 years ago. Um, the Soviet Union was defeated. Um, the Russian Federation is not the Soviet Union. There is no great ideological um, force waiting to impose itself on the nation states of Western Europe. Likewise with China, um, there is no great there is no great plan for territorial expansion. They have no desire to impose their direct rule over the states of Southeast Asia uh, or East Asia for that matter. So 
the, the need for self-defense in that sense is a non-starter. What we simply have are organizations desperately trying to justify their own existence and only really doing that by inventing threats and then trying to move into the space adjacent to that threat to give itself growth. With all the, the, the money that flows from this as, as countries join these organizations and have to buy the military hardware and uh, and other support equipment um, that makes them a functioning part of the, uh, of, of the alliance. It's a massive gravy train. So there we are. I'm, it is, a, I think, a an optimistic view um, that war is definitely not um, is definitely not inevitable um, and more likely it is a holding game simply to accelerate the process and the divisions within the alliance um, we see it very very clearly in the um, in, in the in the NATO in the in the European theatre at the moment I'm sure that it's even more pronounced actually in East Asia because there was never that much of a, uh, a of an architect, of an infrastructure, of a security architecture to begin with, um, and simply the efforts would seem to be to do with regime change around uh, many parts of uh, many states in Southeast Asia seem to be getting absolutely nowhere except for seriously antagonizing the vast proportion of the populations that live there. It's the kind of thing where the wheels can very easily come off and the backlash will be hard and severe, and in terms of uh, the lifestyle, the lifetimes of most people, alive today, permanent. There we are. I'm going to uh, end it there and say that obviously there's a lot more um, steam to roll uh, in both of these um, theatres and I will be keeping a sharp eye on both of them and discussing when appropriate and uh, when there's something worth talking about. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you did, please bless like. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, please do. It's free and it helps the channel to grow. If you would like other people to hear what I have to say, please hit the share button. And if you would like to leave a comment, have an idea or simply comment on the channel in general, um, please leave a comment and I will reply as quickly as I can where it is appropriate to do so. Thank you very much. I look forward to joining, to you joining with me, I should say, in the next video.